Hello world, my name is Andy Silvers and today we're going to talk about what HP should do with their HP ZBook X2 2-in-1 tablet. Alright, so this channel isn't currently monetized, so if you would like to help support the channel, obviously do the cool things like liking and subscribing, but for those who don't know, I'm not only a YouTuber, but I'm an author and filmmaker. Currently, I have three books available on Amazon.com. My most recent book is called Solomon Grando vs. The Jupiter Witch. It has five out of five stars right now. And you can get the hardcover right now cheaper than you can get the paperback because it is on promotion. I believe it's around 34% off. So please check that out, Solomon Grando. That book is for ages, I would say, 16 and up. I also have books for younger readers, including ages 8 to 12. I have a coming-of-age story called Red Sprites and Blue Jets. And for even younger children, I have a book for ages 3 to 6 called The Very Colorful Caterpillar. All these books have great ratings and all of them are available at the links in the video description. So it's important to note that this video is not really speculation because I don't actually believe that HP is going to update the X2 uh, anytime soon even though I would like them to. Instead, it's more of a sort of thought experiment of what would I like to see and I think many other people if HP were to update their ZBook X2 tablet. So, uh, to give a quick bit of backstory, the uh, HP uh, have uh, a segment of laptops and tablets called the ZBook line. Uh, I own a ZBook Fury G8, which is a laptop form factor workstation, or mobile workstation. And uh, back in, I believe, 2017, HP released a very unique product, the ZBook X2. Now, whenever HP uses the letters X2 in the name, it pretty much always means that it is a 2-in-1 tablet computer. Uh, and it pretty much always means that it has Windows on it. So, HP has done this a couple times. Back in 2016, they had a Spectre X2, which was based on their sort of premium Spectre line. And then now, even to this day, I believe they still have their Elite X2, which is basically a business uh, tablet, which is extraordinarily expensive. Anyway, the ZBook X2 was unique in that it was a it was a tablet. It wasn't technically a laptop, so it was a lot more mobile and portable than a lot of other devices. But it had a 4K touchscreen with a Wacom pen included, uh, and unlike pretty much any other tablet on the market, it had an incredible port selection, which is something I'm going to get into. But suffice it to say, the ZBook X2 is a unique bit of computer history and is one of my favorite devices of all time. In fact, I was going to buy one and the only reason I didn't get a used one off of eBay was simply because I didn't quite have the horsepower I would have liked for the kind of video editing and animation that I do. But other than that, it's a stellar product. However, if you heard me say that it was released in 2017, you'll know that that means it's kind of old now. So, I believe, I think the most recent version of this tablet was the G4, but it might have been the G5. I'd have to double check that, but uh, to put it simply, uh, HP's latest version of the ZBook X2 tablet features up to a 4K resolution matte touch display uh, with HP Dream Color technology available with, I believe, a peak brightness of right around 400 nits. Uh, this tablet featured an HDMI port, a uh, USB Type-A port, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, and a full-sized SD card reader, um, which is, and the SD card goes all the way into the tablet, it doesn't stick out either. So if you're a photographer on the go, and you need to do Lightroom or Photoshop on the go to retouch your photos, you can just leave the SD card in without worried about, worrying about it snapping off. Um, and it had a fingerprint reader. Uh, and a headphone jack. Suffice it to say, it's a really wonderful product. Um, and there's not a lot of competition for the ZBook X2 11. Uh, but there is a little bit, but I want to get into that after I discuss the specs. So it had a 4K touchscreen display. It was a 16 by 9 display in terms of aspect ratio. It was 14 inch diagonal. 
It had a number of quick access sort of shortcut button keys on both sides of the device. So if you were left-handed or right-handed, you could make use of them. Uh, it had a Wacom pen included. I think it used EMR technology, if I recall correctly. Uh, Wacom has a couple different pen protocols like AES and EMR, and I can't remember exactly which one this is. But I can say that reviewers have said that it was excellent. The device also is interesting in that it has a kickstand, a built-in metal kickstand on the tablet that actually allows you to prop it up at a number of different angles, which of course for artwork, especially on the go, is extremely convenient. The tablet also has an included keyboard. It is an all-metal keyboard. Uh, it snaps to the bottom. Uh, obviously, this tablet is a bit of a Surface clone, but there's a lot of companies, Dell, Lenovo, HP, uh, who have all made, Asus, who have all made um, Microsoft Surface Pro clones, devices that are similar um, but different in their own way. And this particular tablet also has an attachable and detachable keyboard. The keyboard on the ZBook X2 also actually has a smart card reader built into it, which is extremely nice for sort of business applications. And like most tablets, the ZBook X2 also has a front and rear camera, which is good, although I suspect the image quality, especially compared to today, is probably not the greatest, but it's nice that it is at least there for basic conference calls. As for the internal specs, the 2017 ZBook X2, uh, the last time it was refreshed, um, included an 8th gen Intel Core i7, up to, I believe, 32 gigs of RAM, up to, I believe, 2 terabytes of SSD capacity were configurable. You had to select it, but y you could. Uh, and it also had a um, Wi-Fi 5 card. The last unique thing about the uh, specs for the... Uh, X2 uh, mobile workstation is the dedicated graphics card. Now, it is not a very good graphics card uh, in terms of uh, performance, but it is a quadro line, which means it does have the drivers and certifications for certain types of CAD work and modeling and so on and so forth. So it's not a very powerful card, and I would never game on it in a million years, but for basic 2D and uh, light 3D CAD, actually, it's a, it's a pretty big bonus. And again, is not something you really ever see in um, Windows tablets. It's just, it's almost unheard of for them to have a dedicated graphics card of any kind. As for competition, how is the ZBook X2 back in 2017, how was it placed in the market? Well, there's really only two, two and a half-ish real competitors. So the biggest, most obvious competitor will be Wacom themselves. They make something called the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro, and they refreshed the Mobile Studio Pro, I believe in 2016 or 2017, with 8th gen um, CPUs from Intel, and an actually more powerful GPU, I believe it was the Quadro P1000, uh, it might have been the P2000 GPU, was available in the uh, Mobile Studio Pro. It did not have as good a port selection, in my opinion, but a unique feature of the Wacom that the HP didn't have is a little door on the back that can be opened to allow you to relatively easily access the storage and RAM. So that was really nice that you could upgrade the storage and RAM, or at least uh, replace it if something went wrong. The Wacom Mobile Studio Pro uh, also came in two different sizes, which the HP did not. So the Mobile Studio Pro came in a 13 and a 16 inch size, and they were really not the same product. The 16 inch size was better in basically every way. The screen was higher resolution and brighter. The battery was bigger, and the 16 inch version had more uh, custom function buttons. Uh, and there, I believe there were a few other differences, but uh, with the Mobile Studio, if you bought the bigger one, you were gonna get a lot more for your money. HP only has one size option, which of course fits perfectly right between those two at a 14 inch size, which I think is pretty much perfect for most mobile applications. Now the Mo Mobile Studio Pro is actually a very strong competitor to the HP, but I personally prefer the HP in part because of its boxy angular design, which I think looks aesthetically pleasing, but more importantly, because HP utilizes dream color technology, which makes the colors significantly more accurate than the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro's display, and features a higher peak brightness of right around 400 nits. Furthermore, 
The ZBook X2 had a better port selection, including a full-size HDMI output, which is extremely convenient. And the Mobile Studio Pro's only sort of special port besides Thunderbolt uh, was the SDXE card reader, which is thankfully included. The last thing I'll mention is that the ZBook X2 had a built-in kickstand, which is extremely convenient as the Mobile Studio Pro uh, kind of had an optional kickstand accessory, but it was not really the most durable and solidly built. It worked, but it was nowhere near as elegant or convenient, especially on the go, as the X2 um, Mobile Workstation from HP. And obviously, it wouldn't be a comparison without mentioning the iPad Pro. So the iPad Pro exists and did exist back in 2017. The iPad Pro had a lot of advantages over the ZBook X2, mostly it being smaller, lighter, cheaper, and having the incredible Apple Pencil, which is up there in terms of responsiveness and quality writing feel with a lot of Wacom's pens. However, if you've used both Wacom uh, pen technology and Apple's uh, pen technology, please uh, comment below and let me know which one you think is superior. Anyway, the iPad Pro is a strong competitor, but the obvious downside is that the iPad Pro doesn't have a full desktop operating system and it has a horrendous port selection. It doesn't even have a headphone jack. So in terms of real-world functionality for professionals needing to use Lightroom, Photoshop, CAD, etc., it's going to be pretty limiting. All right, let's get to the finale of the video where I talk about the future. Here's what I think HP should do with the ZBook X2 uh, lineup. Uh, again, as of making this video, they haven't announced or produced a follow-up to the 2017 version of the device. So maybe they will, maybe this year, maybe next year they will update this device. I'm not sure, I have no idea, but I am... Uh, putting out my ideas for what HP should do with a new ZBook X2 mobile workstation device. If you're working in Photoshop, Lightroom, pretty much anything where you're creating something as opposed to viewing it, 16x9 just ain't going to cut it. So 3x2 I think is the perfect aspect ratio for a device like this. Uh, I don't have too many specifics on the resolution. I think that 3000 by 2000 would be perfect. But I understand that supply chain can make that difficult because HP doesn't make displays themselves as far as I know. So they would have to source it from someone else. So if it was like 3840 by 2400, that would be fine. Although I think that would be a lot more pixels than a 14-inch device really needs. Uh, and it would drain the battery life. I would like it to be at least 600 nits peak brightness and use uh, HP's newest Dream Color technology. I would like it to have a 90 or 120 hertz refresh rate. Also keeping in line with HP's other uh, latest and greatest ZBook products. Next, I think that HP should address the cameras. There's not much to really fix here other than just improving them in terms of quality. I would uh, recommend HP pull their 5 megapixel webcams from their other ZBook products. It makes sense to use a lot of the same stuff in a product lineup that is all supposed to be for mobile workstation professionals. I'm not actually a huge fan of HP incorporating a bunch of Thunderbolt 4 ports into a new theoretical ZBook X2. However, I understand from a business perspective it makes a lot of sense to do this for marketing and for people who genuinely want it. So instead, I'm going to try to meet in the middle and say, have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, but maybe put one of them on the other side of the device. Uh, keep the USB-A port, a legacy port like that is extremely valuable for people who need to plug in a thumb drive or a mouse or something, especially if they're on the go. And here's the thing that I think would be really interesting. That not even Wacom or Microsoft with their Surface lineup or Apple have, have done. Which is the original ZBook X2 has an HDMI output, which is great and they should keep it. But I think HP should incorporate an HDMI input. What this allows customers to do is keep their pretty substantial investment a lot longer because an HDMI input would allow the device to turn into an external display when you don't want to use it for its computing capabilities. This would be an incredible benefit to everyone buying the device as they could use a more powerful desktop computer at home and just plug in using HDMI, turning the ZBook X2 into basically a really fancy 
tablet for doing art and illustration, but then when they're on the go, they can unplug the HDMI cord and take it and slip it into a backpack and go wherever they need to. They won't have quite as much horsepower, but it, it basically extends the life of the product. It makes it something useful everywhere, at home and on the go. As for the specs of the device, uh, I think that HP should uh, update those, obviously, to meet with 2022 standards. My recommendation would probably be to go with a Core i7 uh, U-series processor, the 12th gen Core i7 U-series processor, and to go with um, a NVIDIA T600 uh, mobile GPU that is about as powerful as it can get before the device starts to overheat. Again, it is still a tablet and it is still pretty thin and small. However, the ZBook X2 does have active fans, which should help with the cooling. As for the uh, RAM, I do think that going with DDR4 RAM is still a good idea as DDR5 takes up quite a bit of power and can get pretty hot in some cases. As for storage, if HP can fit it in, I think they should actually put in two SSD slots. Uh, and I think that they should make them both configurable by the purchaser uh, at checkout. However, I think that you should be allowed to leave the second slot empty and put in uh, any SSD you want. Uh, if HP could allow for double-sided SSDs, that would be great. However, I recognize the reality of it being a tablet means they probably can't. So even if it was single-sided SSDs only, that would still allow the new ZBook X2 to have up to four terabytes of SSD storage, which for photographers shooting, say, you know, 42 megapixel raw photos is extremely beneficial. So those are my thoughts on the HP ZBook X2 mobile workstation. As is, it is a great device. However, it is obviously showing its age. And there's no evidence that HP is going to create a new one anytime soon. And actually, Wacom is also not showing any signs that they're going to upgrade their Mobile Studio Pro uh, 16 or 13 anytime soon either. I would really like for both of these companies, actually, to upgrade so that I can cover both products and artists have uh, all the options they can possibly have for modern Windows 10 and Windows 11 supported devices that can handle their workflow needs. All right, if you have any thoughts on what HP should do with the ZBook X2, if they should continue the lineup at all, and if so, what features should they include, please comment below. Please comment below if you have any questions or if you have any video, video ideas you would like me to cover. And please check out my books. It really helps support the channel when you do that. Links are in the description. All right, I will see you in the next video.